Hello, my name is Jody Ann Johnson. I'm the CEO of Action Coach business coaching firm, Team Sage here in Miami, and the host of Business Spotlight South Florida, where we focus on the businesses that make South Florida great. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Alexander Fedorowitz. Fedorowitz, is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. Okay, great. The founder and CEO of QRX Labs, an advanced skincare line. Welcome, Alexander. Could you please tell us a bit about your company and what makes it unique? Sure. Good morning. Great to be with you, Jody. Um, so, you know, we we are uh, we're a small company. We're uh, we're a relatively new brand to a market that's uh, that's very very crowded. As uh, you probably know, in the U.S., there's there's probably thousands of, of, of brands of, of, of skincare products. And so we, we tried to come to the market with a slightly different uh, angle, you know, which is today, if you look at the, the skincare market in general, it's very polarized. You have a lot of companies uh, nowadays that are focused on all the pure, natural, organic, you know, 100% natural ingredients and, and all that, which is great. It's been a market that's been growing very quickly, and there's a lot of interest in that, in that, in that market by, by the consumer. And then you have all the large traditional skincare companies and laboratories like you know L'Oreal and SkinCeuticals and, and and all these big companies that mostly formulate using technology and science and uh, you know mostly leverage uh, synthetic ingredients. Uh, sometimes you look at the ingredient list and it's just a bunch of names that you don't even know how to pronounce, right? And so it's it's a very very different approach, right? And, and we looked at that market as outsiders originally and just thought it didn't make any sense because like there's a lot of great natural ingredients and and most people like to use a product that's mostly natural but at the same time there's also a lot of technological innovation so we thought why not make a product that's mostly natural but still leverage some of the proven safe um technology that's out there right and and mix them to make a product that's mostly natural but that's very effective and that and that works and that performs and and that brings the results that that the consumers are are looking for and that's you know that's where the whole concept of nature enhanced came and you know um so you know one, one of our one of our taglines is uh, ex experience nature enhanced by science and, and it's really exactly like what we do right we take the best you know from nature the best from science we we mix it together and we create products that are mostly natural not 100% natural but mostly natural and that that are effective and have you know uh, actives that are proven and that and that work and that deliver results. It's fascinating. I love that nature enhanced by science because the you know the science that has been evolving you know since I've been alive. If you look back in World War II, they didn't even have antibiotics. They used uh, sulfur, right? Sure. So come a really, really long way in the last hundred years in terms of being able to really uh, eradicate some of the, not just the, the diseases, but, you know, to bring it over to skincare. And of course, you know, me included, we all want to look our best, you know, and so this line of, of products that you have, I was quite fascinated with when I was doing research on your company. How did you come up with the name QRX Labs? That's a that's a good question. So so first of all, for anybody today who's launching a company or launching a brand, right? I, you know, I don't know if you know, but it, it's really become a challenge to find a name for your brand or for your business where the name is available is not already used by somebody else. The trademark has not been registered, and the domain name on the internet is also available, right? Like so, finding that, that you know. These, the, the combination of these three factors is actually very, very challenging. Like it, it's surprising how many names are already either the trademark is registered or the domain name is already registered or, you know, somebody's already using the name somewhere. And it's, it's actually, it's very surprising, but it's, it's, it's very, very, very hard. So like usually, you know, when you start doing that kind of brainstorming to come up with a good name, the majority of whatever you're going to come up with, even the ones that you think are not so good, they're already taken. So, so, it's, <laughs> so it's very difficult, right, to, to find a good, you know. And, and there's 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 criteria so that that we wanted to uh, to, uh, to for our brand to meet, like 
you know, easy, not too, not too long, you know, easy to kind of easy to remember, easy to spell out, you know, that you don't have to explain how, how to spell, how to write or because today is also a challenge, right? If, you, if I tell you what our domain name is and you don't know how to spell it, you're probably not going to be able to find our website. And so, so, you know, we, we started, we, we wanted labs in the name because labs reflects like what we do and, you know, and we're a serious yeah. company and our products are products that have active ingredients and all that. And then, you know, we, we went with the RX, the uppercase R, oh, lowercase yeah. X, which represents in most people's mind, a prescription, right? Yeah. So typically yeah. this is how, you know, even if you look on the, 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 the traditional old prescription papers, they had an RX, you know, at the top, and that's the, yeah. the symbol for, for prescription. And then, you know, we, we added the Q in front, which is quality, right? I mean, and that's a, that's a uh -huh. big, you know, that's a big uh, a factor for us. I mean, we want to produce um, products that are affordable, that don't have a, a, a huge, you know, um, luxury level price tag. So our products are very affordable and they deliver great results. They have larger formats. They deliver more value for the consumer, but they have the same quality that you would find in some top of the line, you know, what's considered luxury brands, right? So you start looking at some of the ingredients that we use, the type of squalane that we use in our squalane based products, the type of um, vitamin C that we use, the type of, of glycolic acid. I mean, those are the same ingredients that are used in some of the most expensive uh, skincare products today, you know, out there in the market. So, so we have that level of quality. We have a price that's affordable. And, you know, that we try to reflect that in the brand name and obviously find a name that was available. And, you know, so, so that, that's the name that, that we got. And it's worked out for us. I think that yeah, it resonates with people. It's short. It's, it's easy. And, you know. Yeah, I was a little intrigued. My background was emergency nursing before I went into business. And so that RX, uh, that caught my eye. But it's a really good explanation of how you named your company. It's brilliant. All right, so how long have you been in business? So technically, our company's been in business now for almost 10 years, but uh, our, our, our company started completely differently. Originally, we were just like a lot of people out there, you know, purchasing products wholesale, reselling them online. And so we were just really like a, a trading or online retailing company, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, at some point we realized that being a middleman, uh, had, had very little future in this new world, right? Because, uh, middlemen are now, you know, not, not that useful, you know, at least not as useful as they used to be. There's a lot more transparency in, in, in pricing in inventory availability, location and channels. Yeah. And so, so, you know, like middlemen is, is, is a role that's shrinking margins are shrinking for middlemen. And so we we uh, we 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 saw that the uh, you know the path uh, towards the future was really around owning a brand, building a brand, and controlling that brand and controlling the destiny of of of, of that brand, right? And so um, back in uh, 2016, we decided to create uh, our own skincare brand, Curex Labs. And so we initially during the year that year we worked on creating the you know the the brand. Welcome back, Alexander. I know that the internet Thank can you. be funny, Sorry about right? the interruption. Um, we just, we just, our internet connection just got dropped by Comcast because they're making network improvements in the area. And so, uh, so I had to, uh, I had to use the backup and I just jumped onto my, uh, my hotspot from, from T-Mobile. So, so, so we're back. You always have to have some contingency plans. Uh, and that's, you know, that's what we do to, uh, to continue doing business. Exactly. The show must go on, right? <laughs> Great, on. Alexander. And it, and you're right. As entrepreneurs, we cannot let the circumstances get in the way. We always have to find a way around it. So well done. Welcome back. All right. Thank so you. you were telling me about in 2016 that you started your uh, own skincare line so that you could actually Correct. manage the brand itself and grow the brand itself. Um, exactly. And, um, exactly. Innovated your business model, so like, well done. Exactly. So we so we so we launched at the end of 2016 with a single product, and since then we've just focused on building building our brand. And you know now we're what six years down the road, and we have over 35 products in our product line. We have different sub product lines and all that. So so we've actually done you know quite well. Uh, and 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 I'm I'm very happy with where we are because when we launched the brand, I had I have a, a few friends who were in the beauty business before, and they told me, "Don't do it. You're going to lose your shirt. This is a, this business is cutthroat. Unless you have millions of dollars for marketing, it's almost impossible. 
you're, you're not going to make it. It's too competitive. It's too expensive. And, and, you know, we kind of ignored a little bit like that advice and we decided to start small and to focus on online, direct to consumer, uh, ignore, kind of like ignore, ignore the tr traditional brick and mortar world and all that. And, and it served us uh, because, you know, with online, you can be a lot more efficient and you can get a lot done with smaller budgets. And that's what we were able to do and just grow from there, you know, step by step. Um, and today we have we have a nice operation. We have a great brand. It's growing. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, consumers that are even on subscriptions for some of our products now. So you know we've acquired a lot of trust from consumers. Uh, we value that trust. We respect it, and we continue to build it and 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 release more and more products based on the feedback that we get from our from our customers. So so you know, finally you know we made it. And sometimes you just have to ignore the advice and just go for it. Well-meaning people with bad advice, right? Sure. So Simon Sinek says that people don't care what you do or how you do what you do. They care why you do what you do. So why do you do this? Why are you doing this? I can see the passion. So what is it? Well, you know, uh, my first of all, my background is is not is not consumer products or CPG. It's not retail. It's not it's none of that. My background is really technology, right? I I, I studied uh, computer science in 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 university. I worked in the IT world for over twenty years. Worked for some of the largest you know uh, tech you know what tech five companies, IBM, Oracle, you know very large companies. Uh, in a completely different world, different business, all virtual, no physical product, right? You know, selling uh -huh. software, building software. And so, you know, when when we got the opportunity to launch a skincare brand uh, after being more than 20 years in the same industry and all that, part of the attraction for me was just like getting into something different, something new, something totally different, something physical. Now we have physical product. We have machines. We make product. We ship product. We deal with with trucks and 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 pallets and forklifts and you know it's, it's it's completely different. So it was after doing the same thing for more than twenty years. Even though I love IT, I love tech, I still love it today. Uh, I loved working for these big companies. I learned a lot from them. Um, I I also love being in a new industry and, and doing something different, something innovative, and creating things and creating products that we can then send to people and see their feedback and reading the reviews. I mean, I don't know if you've you've been to our. Uh, to our product pages on Amazon to read some of the reviews. They're amazing reviews. They're amazing stories. People who say, wow, you know, I had this problem for five years. I tried like over 25 products and nothing was working. And, and now I got this product and, and somehow it's worked for me. And within two or three weeks, I see so much improvement. And I'm, I'm, this is crazy. Some people just write reviews and they say, this is their holy grail, you know? And, 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 and I'm not saying that our products are just that we invented something that didn't exist or anything like that, but we make good products with good ingredients at high concentrations and we sell them at affordable prices. And, and so we, we, we give the opportunity to some people who, who maybe didn't have access to these types of products because of the price or because of other factors, suddenly they have access to products, they use them and, and they work for them. And we see the result, you know, for them, for their lives and for, for their health. And, and, and that's great. I mean, it's a, it's a, it, it's, it's really, it's really encouraging to see that it's motivating and it's, it's fun. Um, so Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm passionate about it. As, as you, as you can <laughs> I can see it, which is a great thing. You say we. Do you have a partner? Yes. Yes, I have a partner uh, from the beginning of the business. And so her, her name is Silvana. And we're, so we're both owners of the company. We've both uh -huh. been there from the beginning. Uh, we don't have any other investor or anything. It's really like the two of us who own the entire, the entire okay. business. And, uh, and and our roles are are very clearly like separated. Like, so she's she's very focused on the operational so everything around our you know our staff our manufacturing operation our fulfillment operation all that and she manages all that and i'm focused on strategy product you know strategy product developments finance you know basically kind of like all of the front facing you know aspects of the of the of the business you're describing what uh, gino wickman wrote in his book traction about the integrator and the visionary so you're the visionary and she's the integrator that visionary who's out there big big uh kind of relationships banking relationships marketing and then the operational person who does implementation of the strategy that you come up with so that's great because right. that's and, and i think that major. i think that works well i think yeah. sometimes in some businesses when you have a, when you have two partners for example who are both visionaries 
or who are both operational, it, it tends to create problems, right? Because like either you're, you know, they're both operational and you're kind of like missing that 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 that, that visionary part and the, the st strategic part, or they're both visionaries and then they just collide because like they, they have <laughs> slightly different visions or radically different visions and they just can't get, you know, <laughs> they can't agree. So uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's it's good to have you know uh, both sides and and balance each other each other out and and uh, complement each other. So yeah, That's great. it's worked out. Good, right. So given your business model, were there opportunities and even challenges in the pandemic? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, so. Uh, yes and yes. I mean, they, they, were there uh, opportunities? Of course, because a lot of people were stuck at home and they just uh, started focusing on uh, their computers, their tablets, their cell phones, and you know what they could purchase online without necessarily leaving their home uh, or just having more more time on the devices simply and looking at, at things. And so, you know, kind of like the, 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 the visits and the page views and everything skyrocketed during the pandemic because they were just locked up in their homes and they have nothing to do, right? So they're, they're going through their social media and, and, and going through Amazon and going through everything they can just, just, just right. looking at stuff. Right. And so, so that's definitely, that was definitely an, an opportunity from that perspective. Now there were also a lot of challenges. And so, you know, we didn't have the challenges that certain businesses like restaurants had because we're a manufacturing company and we ship direct to consumers. So we never stopped operating, not a single day during the pandemic. Right. Like we were open every single day uh, yeah. because we work in a very sanitized environment because we make skincare products. Everything, you know, is covered every day with 99.5% isopropyl alcohol. So actually we never even really had, you know, people getting sick or anything in our facility because everything is so <laughs> sanitized yeah. that yeah. like is not, not a good environment for viruses to to <laughs> to propagate. So we never really had, you know, like a big wave or of COVID or anything, you know, thank God. And and, oh, and uh, we were able to continue operating during that period of time. But there were other challenges. There were a lot of challenges around logistics. So, you know, just trucking and, and the whole freight industry, you know, delays, crazy cost increases, an availability of, 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 you know, trucks and, and drivers and all that. Uh, there were, there were uh, problems with availability of certain components uh, and materials that, that we use to make products. So suddenly, you know, we had to be very creative. Hey, you know, like that type of jar is just has become unavailable across the United States. It's just <laughs> impossible to find. Well, you know, we're going to have to use a slightly different jar and, you know, and, uh, it, so we had to, we had to adapt. We had to be very flexible and agile and, and very proactive there were certain things that were running out. We had to like purchase larger quantities to stock up and be able to to uh, to maintain continuity of of, uh, of our materials and supplies. And then there were other uh, other challenges. For example, around you know uh, online advertising. Um, if you have uh, any any people in your audience who do a lot of online advertising, I'm sure they went through the same thing. Uh, suddenly, very large companies that used to have large budgets for offline advertising. We're not able to use these budgets for offline advertising and they just redirected all of that online, not necessarily in a very efficient or strategic way. So it's kind of like, hey, oh, I got a hundred million here that was planning to spend on billboards in airports. All airports are closed. Well, let me just like pump that into online advertising. Doesn't matter. Just just blast ads like everywhere you can. Right. So suddenly these businesses are like paying insane amounts of money for clicks and, and for for impressions and that obviously you know affected negatively anybody else who's dependent on the online advertising to drive their business and drive their bond so oh, it affected us our that. advertising costs went up yeah you know, so that, that was yeah th those were indirect indirect impacts for for us and uh and now we see that everything you know is is, is kind of like not not a hundred percent but everything has you know, obviously, we don't talk about COVID, COVID anymore uh, in uh, so much in, in the U.S., but there's still some remnants from that in terms of the impact, inflation, uh, some some of the changes that happened uh, on on advertising costs, freight costs, and all that. It's it's come back, but it's not come back 100 percent yet. So, you know, I think I think we still have some some room for for more correction. Well, you were expressing the agility and the ability to be kind of nimble in response. And, and I think that that's a, that's a gift that you know, entrepreneurs have. What would you say is your biggest business challenge in the next two to three years? Uh, I think in the next two to three years, probably our biggest challenge is, um, you know, it's, it's just taking our business to the next level. And there's always a next level, right? I mean, so, so, you know, initially we started 
very, very small, had a single product, you know, had no, no initial customer audience or anything. Cause we're a new brand, right. Starting from scratch. And so, so that's a big challenge, right? Now we've, we've, we've surmounted that challenge and we now have a, an entire product line and we have a pipeline of new products and we have a, a, a large audience of con- customers and we have uh, subscribers to some of our products and all that. And so, so now is like, you know, the, the, the challenge is how do we get then to the, the next level, right? Like, in, for example, how do we get more international exposure in certain key, you know, countries? How do we get more exposure in alternative channels where we're not necessarily present today, right? Uh, maybe how do we start, you know, penetrating into brick and mortar in certain cases where it's strategic? Uh, so, so, so there's, there's a lot to do. I mean, we're still, you know, we, we've grown substantially, but we're still very small compared to some of the giants in, in that business. Yeah. That business continues to grow. That segment continues to grow. Skincare is a huge segment, has huge growth every year. So um, there's still a lot of room to do a lot of things, right? And, and it's always, I think, like when you have a small business and you, you start growing, it's, it's always like, how do you get to that next step, right? And do you need to hire more specialized, you know, uh, professionals? Do you need to invest in more machines, do you need to, you know, and, and all of those are in their, in their, of their own, their, their challenges, right? They're complex. They, they require uh, investments, funds, risk and everything. So, so I, I think those are, are, are the main challenges that we, that we face. Well, and it's great that you're aware of it because there's somebody that, um, that actually that I'm a, a client of, and because of the growth of that company, they have an insufficient infrastructure to manage that growth. So we see as business coaches, sometimes people are having challenges in the business because there's insufficient business development. But just as often, we yeah. see people who grew too fast and hadn't thought through what it was going to take to actually manage that growth. So, so you're, you're touching on a, on a really you're touching on a really good point. And, and actually, if I have some. You know, so, something that I that I applied to my business that really served us well and that I would highly recommend to anybody else who's building a business is you, you may be starting very small, but you have to think big and you have to think like a big corporation. You have to organize yourself like a big corporation. By that, I don't, I don't mean necessarily like hire thousands of people or, or create a lot of bureaucracy. But what I mean is, you know, large companies operate with processes and systems right and and you have to put that in place from the beginning because if you wait until you become large enough that you have a lot of problems then it's 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 a terrible point to stop everything and try to put in place some processes and some systems and so what served me uh here and i i think made a huge difference is all the experience i had working for giant corporations multinational corporations operating in over 100 different countries and all that and seeing just how they do business how what kind of systems they use how do they leverage these systems to, to do business? And so when I when I went into business for my own brand, right from the beginning, we put in place not the same systems because they're too heavy, they're too complex, but we put similar systems, equivalent, simpler systems, but systems that cover the same functions and same processes in place. So so we're we're able to grow today. For example, today I could double my business without any growing pains. We already have financial system, payroll. Uh, MRP, manufacturing resource planning, you know, inventory control, all that in place already. So, so we can grow. I mean, we can grow without, without any problem. And and I think that's, that's very, very important because a lot of people start small. They think, oh, I'm very small. I just need an Excel spreadsheet and, you know, a Word document where I'll just stick my stuff. And then at some point, suddenly they get to like a thousand, you know, orders a month and they're like, you know, I can't deal with it anymore. The spreadsheet is out of control. And And so, um, so I think that's, that's very important. I, and today, I mean, it's, it's easier than ever. There's so many things in the cloud that are available, very cheap. You know, you pay, you pay a few, a few dollars a month and you have access to an ERP application, accounting system, uh, a fulfillment system, you know, all in the cloud. You don't even have to install anything on your computer. I mean, it's, it's, it's easier than ever. Uh, it's easier than ever. So you're inspiring me. What's inspiring you about your business these days? Um, well, first of all, what inspires me in general is, is entrepreneurship. So I, I love to see, you know, other people also succeed. I'm actually part of a local entrepreneur group here in, in Miami is very large. That's Which led one? by a friend of mine, Carlos Alvarez. He's uh, the group is called the uh, wizards of Ecom. 
um and um we you know we have we have regular meetings there there's at least one meeting a week uh, sometimes two meetings a week uh there's events there's trips there was just a, a a cruise there's an annual cruise uh to share around you know entrepreneurship e-commerce and 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 all that uh there's uh there's there's all kinds of events and trips and and uh groups that go together to trade shows and i mean it's a very very active group it's a very large group uh, I think there's over a thousand members in in the group. Um, so, so I love you know I love entrepreneurship. I love to to uh, to listen to other people's stories also to see what they're doing, to see how they're being creative, how they're coming up with solutions to different problems, how they're uh, inventing new ways to to do business. And so that's what inspires me. You know, like I like I like to see that, and I like to participate in that and I like it to be a, a collaborative effort sometimes we have very different businesses but you know I love to hear about something that somebody else is doing maybe in another vertical and try to apply it to mine and and and, and talk about what I do and maybe have other people also do something some things that are similar you know in, in in their own way or in their own products or in their own business and I think I love that I think that's very 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 cool very motivating and uh, and beyond that I mean just for my own brand you know I I just see that skincare offers so many opportunities. I mean, there's new ingredients almost every month that come out. And I'm saying like new ingredients that come out with from suppliers backed up by clinical trials, by 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 a lot of a lot of work and a lot of uh, you know uh, studies and all that and and around their efficiency and effectiveness and 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 how they can be used and what problems they can solve. So so it's almost unlimited. I mean, we could come up with new products almost on a on a daily basis, you know, and, and there would still be more products to to create and improve and invent. So so it's almost like, like an infinite business. I mean, I that I love also because uh it just there's no limit. The limit is only like what we can invent and what we can do and how much we can execute, but that's the only limit. Wow. Well, I am absolutely inspired by you and by your company. So is there anything you want to say before we wrap up this interview? Any parting thoughts? Uh, two things. First thing, um, one, one thing that's different about our business is that we actually manufacture in the U.S. All of our products are manufactured in our own facility by our own staff. We don't, we don't subcontract manufacturing, which is, which is quite special for, for beauty yeah. companies. The majority of beauty companies, makeup, skincare, they all subcontract, even very large brands and all that. They subcontract manufacturing. They think it's, ah, it's too complicated. It's, it's an advantage for us to have everything vertically integrated and to control our manufacturing. It's a little more complicated, but it's it's worth it. It gives us a lot of agility and all that. It gives jobs to, to our employees. We have great employees. We have employees who've been with us for years, uh, some of them almost since the beginning of the brand. They continue to grow also their careers, you know, with us and their personal situation. And so so sometimes, you know, I just hear people saying, oh, no, I think it's impossible. You can manufacture in the U.S., get you get import from China. That's the only way. But you know, it depends. It depends on the pro product. It depends on the situation. But it's not impossible to manufacture in the U.S. You can manufacture in the U.S. your own products, and you can make it uh, efficiently, and you can have great margins, and you can be successful. You know, doing that. So that that's that was one point. I talked about that at Prosper show in Las Vegas last year. I did a presentation around that concept of manufacturing in the U.S. and it's it's very possible, and it's not as complicated as a lot of people imagine. Okay. And, the, and the second point is. Please try our products, you know, you, you know just, <laughs> just, just, just for the sake of curiosity, try one of our products. All our products are covered by a total satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't like the product, you can just return it. We'll return your money. But I really believe in our brand. And, you know, I, I'd love for, for your audience to also like just try the products and know about the company and know about the story, you know, behind the products. And, and if they like the products, then, then, you know, use them and tell other people about them. And it's hard when you're a small business to, to, to have that, you know, that, that, that publicity and that, that visibility. And so anything, you know, is always welcome that they can help our brand uh, be more, more well-known and, 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 uh, and, and uh, by, by, by our audience and by, by consumers in the U.S. So thank, thanks a lot for, for, uh, for having me on, the, on your show. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that a lot of other people launch also their own brands and their businesses and, and, and can have a, a lot of success. Thank you, Alexander. And thank you for, you know, not only what you do for your customers, for what you do for your team and for our community and manufacturing here in Florida, it was not, you know, very well um, established. You know, so being able to do manufacturing even here in Miami, you know, thank you for doing that because it does it provides jobs and it increases the economic uh, impact you know that we can have. So thank you for that. And you can find out more 
about Alexander and his company, QRX Labs at qrxlabs.com on Amazon and in a variety of other places. So when you type it in, you're going to find that they're everywhere. So I, I predict great things from you and for you, Alexander. And thank you for this. Thank you. Thanks. So that Thanks, is Business Spotlight, my Amy in South Florida, where we interview business owners that are making South Florida great. Thank you so much. Thanks.